Did you know that colouring with watercolour pencils is really easy to do? Today I've got some tips to share with you using the new Woodless watercolour pencils from Altenew. Welcome back, it's time for another Take Two with Therese at Altenew and I've got some beautiful cards to share with you. And today is a very special day. We're actually hopping along with Kathy Rakusen and this is part of the Colouring Challenge and it's the Watercolour Therapy Blog Hop that we're joining in on. So I hope you're going to hop along with us today. So head through the link in the description below and you'll be able to join the hop and see more inspiration. And today I want to share with you just how simple watercolouring can be. These pencils from Altenew are so easy to use. There's 24 colours in the pack. They are in the Altenew colours that we know and love. What I'm doing here is actually just laying down a base of colour. I'm not covering the whole flower and I'm using, this is, I use the Coral Bliss and then what I'm doing is adding some darker red colour. I think it's the Heartbeat colour and I'm kind of adding the darker colour where I think the shadows on the flower will be. Now I've got my watercolour brush. I do actually use a well for my watercolour brush. I don't use the water that's within the brush, although you can. I find that I get better control if I dip my brush into a well of water and then I can use some paper towel off to the side to actually remove some water if I think it's a little bit too wet or to remove some colour off the tip of my brush if I think it's too bold and I just will kind of chop and change along the way. The great thing about watercolours is that they are very forgiving. So by adding the two colours before I added the water, it made it easier for me to blend the two colours and get my shading. You can certainly do it one colour at a time. It's not, there's no set rules. This is watercolour paper. It's from the paper pad at Altenew. So it is going to tolerate a lot of water. But what I find when I'm using the pencils is that I don't add a lot of water. So it dries really quickly. So I can actually add more colour on top you know almost immediately although typically I do like to wait a little bit for the color to dry so that I can add have better control over the color I'm going to add. Uh, something else I like to do is leave some white highlights on especially when I'm getting trying to get that loose watercolor look so by not adding too much color in certain spots it adds some lightness to the flower which is what I've done here and I've also add some real dark shadows and what I'm doing here is using a tip to tip technique so I'm using the tip of the brush and the tip of the pencil picking up the color off the end of the with the end of the paintbrush and dropping that in and that just allows me to have better control over where I'm putting my shadows and I can sort of I go into the the creases so the darker shadowed areas of the image and draw the color away and that just adds depth this is jet black I used jet black for my shadows so <laughs> don't be afraid to go dark you can't get much darker than black <laughs> now to add my sentiment I've got the celebrate us stamp set and I'm using my misty here because I don't want to have to start again and stamped uh, in some obsidian ink the second portion of the sentiment which says for you I want to add some ink splatters and one thing I do find is that you can guarantee it's going to splat all over your sentiment and the center of a flower so I tend to cover these up see look I would have just got a big botch <laughs> in the middle of my flower so by protecting them with a piece of cardstock it's, it just saves that drama we don't like drama I'm die cutting the, now this is from the same Celebrate Us sentiment and it says thankful and it's a two piece so it has a shadow and the top word. I did the shadow in some jet black cardstock and the top word thankful I did cut out of the watercolour paper because I didn't want to have two whites in my finished card. I'm adhering those together with some liquid glue and then I just can add this to the front of my top fold card and pop my sentiment up. 
on the front of the card and I did use some black foam squares to do that because I find if I'm popping something up that's jet black the dark squares behind it um, it just adds more of a shadow it doesn't add a shadow you can't see them you're not as likely to see them <laughs> So I want to change things up a little bit now. I'm using the same stamp set. It's a different flower and I've stamped it out twice this time. I've used the watercolour paper pad cardstock again and this time I'm using the simple colouring stencil and adding a base of colour to both the flowers and the leaves. So I did one version a little bit lighter than the other. I used blush for both the pink bases and to make it lighter I just used my ink blending tool and didn't add as much ink. To make it darker I added more ink. But on the leaves I used the limeade on the lighter version and the lime on the darker. And what I like to do is just keep my post-it notes in place while I turn my stencil around. It just saves me having to recover everything up. How simple is that? This time I'm going to add colour very similarly. So I'm adding the pencil, the watercolour pencils, directly over top of the blended ink that I've done. And that's just, oh, here's my little Maggie. It's Mags. It's Bobby McGee, because she's a bobtail. She's pretty shy, actually. I don't know if you've seen her before. You might have. <laughs> anyway, she's walking over to get up on the cat the cat tree, the cat pole, it's right beside me. <laughs> and then she hangs there and plays with things. Makes a mess sometimes. <laughs> so I'm doing exactly the same thing here that I did on the previous flower, but I'm not going to have the white highlights this time. So this is a really easy way to add a base of colour and then add some simple shading. So I did the same thing again. I added the two colours to the flower before I came in with the water brush and then when I want to add my shadows again I'm going to be using that tip to tip technique so the tip of the brush and the tip of the woodless watercolor pencil now this I mean it says that they're woodless so you get lots of color in the pencil the pencil is basically all color so you get good bang for your buck there but the outside of it is shiny you are not going to get uh, dirty fingers from holding onto the pencils as such and they sharpen really easily just with a normal pencil sharpener. So I did the same thing again just came in with the uh, dark shadows but I did also come in with my pencil afterwards and that just added a bit of texture to these flowers so hopefully you'll be able to see that in the photos at the end but you really can see that added texture in real life. It's really quite beautiful and it's a great technique to use your pencils for and gives a different look to your flowers. And now I'd love to know which version you prefer. Is it the washy kind of watercolour look or is it the one where I used the simple colouring stencil first? Let me know in the comments below. Now all that's left to do is add a sentiment. I've got the water brush hello dye and a sub sentiment that I've stamped out from the Hello and Hugs stamp set. One of my go to sets for sure. All right, don't forget to join us in the hop. The link will be in the description below, and there'll be all the links for the products that I've used today, both here and at the blog. I look forward to seeing you there. Till next time, bye.